17-year-old Nikki Kuhnhausen was murdered in June of 2019 by a man she had just met hours earlier. Investigators say during a sexual encounter, 25-year-old David Bogdanov discovered Nikki was transgender and strangled her to death with a cell phone charging cord. And bottom line, you do feel he killed Nikki because she was trans? Yes. Absolutely. David claimed that Nikki attacked him and reached for his gun during a struggle and that he had no choice but to strangle her. But a jury convicted David for the murder and he was sentenced to nearly 20 years in prison. Court will sentence at the top end of the range. Nikki's death inspired loved ones and advocates to push for a change in state law. It should not be a legal justification for violence. They introduced legislation called the Nikki Kuhnhausen Act that bans the so-called gay or trans panic defense in Washington. What this bill does, it removes a possible defense for the kind of thing that happened to Nikki. According to the LGBTQ plus Bar Association, the panic defense is a legal strategy that asks a jury to find a victim's sexual orientation or gender identity to blame for a defendant's violent reaction, including murder. A defendant claims that it not only explains, but excuses a loss of self-control and the subsequent attack. David Bogdanov didn't use this defense. He claimed self-defense, but Nikki's family wanted to make sure no defendant could ever use the panic defense moving forward. I am happy to sign this bill. The Washington legislature agreed, overwhelmingly passing Nikki's law, and Governor Jay Inslee signed it into law. It certainly is a statement by the legislature and a good one that this kind of defense is not going to be tolerated, and it's not a thing that exists here. So it's important to have it on the books. The LGBTQ plus panic defense has been banned in 16 states plus the District of Columbia and has been introduced but not passed in 12 other states. What message do you hope this sends? Well, the message is that they're not alone, um, that they're, they need to reach out uh, for to positive people that understand and will be there for them. There are allies out there, people who care, who are trying to change that world. This is such an important story to dig into for so many reasons. And part of your reporting in the podcast, you interviewed an expert who's been studying this yeah. panic defense for, for decades. Yeah, so he's a criminal justice professor out of Texas, and he's um, studied this defense dating all the way back to the 1960s. And wow. so he wanted to find out what impact that had for defendants when it came to, um, number one, the charges they were faced, mm -hmm. if they had charges lessened or dropped, and then number two, what their sentences looked like, so how long they would end up going to prison. Um, it was pretty startling that he discovered looking back over the last 40 years or so, and we're looking at murder trials, defendants who used this strategy, the panic defense strategy, there was an 8% acquittal rate. And oh so um, it's pretty startling statistics, and you'll hear a lot more from this expert um, in our podcast. Like I said, such an important story. Yeah, so many nuances here to cover. Yeah. So Ashley, thank you so much. And reminder here, episode one of Should Be Alive is available right now, wherever you listen to podcasts. Each week, we'll release a new episode there are six total. We'll also have photos, video, and much more information about the case. You can check it out at kgw.com slash should be alive.